Hello everybody, uh, welcome to my channel, it's Eva from Bohemian Crafting. Uh, last few days I spent with reorganizing and moving furniture in my craft room and uh, I'm far away from to be finished. I still have lots of things to organize and right now I'm insorting my stamps and I was thinking maybe we can do some craft together. So I'm gonna swap my camera, move to my table and maybe we will do something beautiful. So right now I am digging in my Tim Holtz stamps and I was thinking I didn't use them for a very long time and uh, to be honest I never did kind of a longer video with stamping so I do have here this uh, very uh, very cheap uh, mini notepad and I used that notepad a few times uh, to add this these papers into my journals and today I was thinking how about if that rest uh, I will turn into mini mini something maybe just stamped book probably so that's what I will work today uh, it does have a really very <laughs> fragile uh, cover it does have very fragile papers these papers are uh, from very light paper these sheets are from very light paper, so it's nothing strong. And I will probably use also uh, the glue to glue them sometimes together. And I will use those Tim Holtz stamps. And I would like to show you a few techniques I learned. Uh, I'm not using them often because uh, I'm still not very strong with my stamping, but I'm learning. My son, Jacob, he loves stamps. He sometimes is crafting with me. And he's amazing with stamping and I'm learning from him. So uh, those techniques, which I am trying to show him, he's then uh, kind of uh, teaching me how to do it properly or how to do my stamping properly. Because mostly I do all kind of smushes all around. And he told me that I am too hard on my stamps, that uh, I press too much or I move my hands while I am stamping and that's not good and it's really funny that I do share those techniques with him and then he's teaching me. <laughs> so today I would like to show you a few techniques and maybe create something really beautiful from this cheap notepad. First technique uh, will be semi-transparent stamping, kind of like layering stamping. I'm not sure uh, about exact words but uh, we will use stamps we will use uh, clear embossing powder and create kind of like see-through page for background stamping i'm gonna use this beautiful stamp this is papillon collection i do believe it's very old collection for that background stamping i'm gonna use ice spruce distress ink Because I would like to use embossing powder, clear embossing powder, uh, I'm gonna use this uh, anti-static uh, pillow. It, it does have anti-static powder inside and it's perfect when you need to make sure that your background paper will don't catch any uh, embossing powder where you don't want to have it. So I dab that anti-static powder on it. I'm gonna use these beautiful butterflies and for my embossing uh, effect I'm gonna use this stampin dose this is clear embossing ink in the bottle I have to say that uh, I am using this one now the most often because I found it very easy to use always juicy and now clear embossing powder And because I did use that anti-static powder, this embossing powder should get uh, stick only on these butterflies. I'm going to use my heating tool and melt that embossing powder. And as you can see, that embossing powder got melted. 
and if I will leave those papers you will see that these uh, butterflies got kind of like semi-transparent look and it's just because those papers are very light and uh, once that embossing powder is melted through the, that paper it does get, get uh, this semi through that uh, semi transparent look and that's perfect i do have in this bottle mix of distress ink i have used tea dye uh, tea dye or this re -inker. and uh, i think i used also ground espresso a little bit uh, quite a lot uh, and i mix it with water these two distress ink reinkers or inks so i'm gonna spray that and now with cloth i'm gonna take off here and there that water but not not all of it and i'm gonna dry the rest again with my heating tool so it's dry now and on the opposite side i will use distress ink broken china and just with full ink pad i'm gonna kind of slide that ink pad very softly i'm not pressing too much just very softly and again i will use my mix of tea dyes ink and do exactly same like before so this is how it looks like now i do have that semi-transparent look i do have there also blue color in in those butterflies just because it's semi-transparent and from that opposite side when i slide it uh, when i slide that distress ink pad it left here and there some kind of ink so it does have those colors see through and my paper get to lose a little bit so i'm gonna just rip it off and place it over there i will uh, put them together once i will have more papers finished and because this uh, clear embossing powder make this semi-transparent technique i'm gonna show you also another technique how you can do from very cheap paper uh, kind of like fake vellum uh, look but first i'm gonna stamp a little bit that paper i'm gonna be using another uh, stamps from Tim Holtz and do some stamping so I did my easy stamping and I also distressed that page with uh, ground espresso I'm gonna rip it off straight away because for this technique I need to have just this sheet and I'm gonna be using uh, this fragrant wax fragrance wax uh, it's this one fresh linen and uh, it is for uh, refreshing rooms but you can use candle you can use any kind of paraffin i wouldn't recommend to use uh, baby oil which i heard many times that ladies are using for this technique baby oil i wouldn't recommend that because baby oil doesn't get dry uh, it will keep your paper still uh, oily and uh, it will also uh, kind of move that uh, oily greasy feeling on another paper so i wouldn't recommend oil any kind of oil uh, the wax bee wax uh, these uh, paraffines uh, candles or furniture wax these are perfect because they do dry uh, and you can just wipe any kind of excess with the cloth and your paper will be clean and dry so I'm gonna use these first I'm gonna wipe a little bit on my paper and I will be using heating tool to melt that wax on that paper if you don't have heating tool just uh, preheat your oven wipe a candle or this fragranced wax on the paper and place the paper in your oven and that wax will get melted To spread that wax evenly i'm gonna be using this brush which i am using all the time for my for this uh, folks volume technique 
Now I'm gonna just spread that wax on my paper and I will also kind of wax the other side as well. Once you have that wax on all of your paper, you just need to take some cloth and wipe any kind of extras from your paper that will also bring more transparency to your paper. And it's better to stamp it before this technique because then that stamping is permanent. Uh, yeah, it's permanent. It's the right word. It's permanent. <laughs> So any kind of extras and I do have my second page and if I will place them together you can see a little bit uh, those butterflies underneath. But because I would like to have their more visible page I'm gonna take another paper and do another stamping. Because I am in that blue brown color, I'm gonna be stamping first with that light blue. So it will be just that background, and now I'm gonna stamp over it with this espresso truffle memento. And I do have kind of like a uh, offset, I think it's the right word, uh, that I didn't place the stamp exactly, so I do have kind of like shadow behind. So I did all my stamping, I also sprayed uh, the paper with my mixture and I used also that uh, Broken China Distress Ink for this paper. And I'm gonna take another one. And this time I will use a stencil. This is a stencil from Studio Light. And the name is Mask MB02. I will put all names down below for all these uh, stamps and stencils. So I'm gonna be doing kind of like. Stamp in stencil. So first I'm gonna apply ink. So for this technique uh, I'm gonna keep that stencil and paper uh, as they are now. I'm gonna take a stamp. and stamp through the stencil now when I do have that stamping done I'm gonna take my stencil out of it and I do have stamping and stenciling at the same point I'm gonna flip it over Place my stencil back and just with brush to kind of like you know brush off all that ink in the background of this paper. Now I'm gonna take my inks and just oops, just <laughs> easily wipe <laughs> that ink on the edges. 
and again use my spray and kind of match all these papers together and dry it with my heating tool. I do have here another paper and for next technique I would like to use the stamp and uh, gold foil. This is foil for foiling, uh, for hot foiling. So it's very uh, soft and it's easy to transfer that foil. And I'm gonna use strong PVA glue. This one, it's a really good one. And this dubbing tool. I'm gonna add a little bit of that glue on my dubbing tool or distressing tool. And it's good if you will have prepared something what you will immediately clean your stamp because uh, this depends on, on glue which you will be using. This one it dries very fast and I don't want to mess up my stamps. So I'm gonna add the glue on my distressing tool and I'm gonna tap 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 that glue on that stamp and stamp on paper do not stay there for a long time otherwise you will transfer the paper on your stamp then take the foil and place it over that glue nicely So I'm gonna clean my stamp and clean my table and also wipe out a little bit of that glue from this one. Then take your bone folder and try to press the foil where you put your stamp. Here is quite an uh, intricate stamp so I hope it will transfer nicely and we're gonna give it a try and I do have gold foiling I know it's kind of distressed but I, for my uh, vintage look it's perfect and now I can stamp around and do some uh, sprayering to kind of match it all together so I have made a few more papers and I also uh, glued two papers together and then folded them to some kind of base pocket and then did stamping. I do have this way four of them, always double layer, folded and some stamping all around and I do have here also double layer of paper and some stamping on it and I will create another pocket. I like to use my sewing machine, so I will add there some sewing here and there, and then we will move to, to the cover. So before I will put together these pockets, uh, I would like to go one more time back to that gold foil. Uh, I'm gonna take glue stick and I just wanna try if that glue stick will also hold somehow that gold foil, so I place that glue stick here and there, not evenly. And I'm gonna cover this paper with that gold foil. Well, I do believe it will work. Uh, look at that. <laughs> Good. I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna take my pockets so I do have these two these two and this this one no oh, this way and I would like to create closure today I'm gonna take as a closure these beautiful buttons sorry for my hands that <laughs> my stamping everywhere I would like to take these beautiful buttons and kind of use them as a closures uh, on my on my pockets 
and for that I'm gonna take just paper punch and cut the circles so from cardstock uh, from some old uh, craft envelope that heavy one I cut one inch circles and I already sewn one button to that circle uh, on the one button I will keep leave long string that will be as a closure the string which I used for sewing that button to that cardstock and that I will uh, glue it on the top of my of my paper the other one I will sew so just very easy way I'm gonna take that one which does have string and I'm gonna go it right here the other one I'm gonna glue it on the bottom that will create closure for my pocket or for that booklet or something <laughs> same way I will create those closures on those other pockets so I do have sewn uh, the buttons I also glued them on these pockets and the pockets I glued on these three sides to the background paper so that way I do have opening here it will be like side pocket I can open this totally so it can be like writing spot or like another holder or pocket this is exactly the same here I do have a bottom pocket which I will sew onto this paper with my sewing machine and this I do have prepared once I will sew this as a flap with my sewing machine like this I can now take my prepared closure, put the glue on that bottom circle and glue it on the right spot so I will match that bottom circle this one with the top one on the kind of you know kind of right spot to find the right spot and then I can close my pocket and here I do have this here I do have these two last two <coughs> folded papers and I would like to use them as a pocket so first uh, I'm gonna sew these two sides on each of them like this and before I will glue them on my paper uh, I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna put weight on the flaps so these flaps will hold down and for that I'm gonna grab my paper where I put the, that gold foil I already ripped that gold foil from that paper so you can see how it looks like and I really like that I'm gonna use again broken china and my mixture I do have my strip of paper colored uh, a little bit more than those others but it's still very fragile paper and I would like to use dyes uh, I would like to use these dies from some pool these are creative expression craft dies by some pool um, here is maybe some uh, ah, shabby basics whale tail tuck i guess <laughs> and i'm gonna use these two dies and cut 
this shape so for that to make it a little bit more stronger I'm gonna glue it on another paper and make uh, a little bit more thicker paper from this one then I will use those dies so I do have here my little collection and I really love the look of these look at that that golden uh, stripes that golden imperfection make it makes that perfect so I'm gonna grab these tap pulls or I'm not sure I'm not sure how to call them and I will glue them right on the edge of these uh, of these pockets and I also used this is a uh, die from Elizabeth craft dies and this is from collection 1736 reinforcement variety pack it's for, from Planners Essentials, Elizabeth Craft Dice. Wonderful collection of those reinforcement, uh, kind of ho hollow reinforcements. I do have these tabs fixed on the edges of these two pockets. I also uh, put two tabs on the papers on the sides and those uh, small reinforcements I placed like decoration here and also here and here and here you know on spots now I'm gonna use uh, my crocodile punch the holes in in those reinforcements and where there are holes here in those tabs I'm gonna fix an eyelet So I do have fixed eyelets and on these eyelets I will probably just hang some decorations. I've got here these stars, so maybe, oh yeah, maybe stars. Do I have more? I think I do. What I was thinking, I do have here these stamped circles, but I do love those stars a little bit more. So I'm just going to hang there, there, hang them there. And... Yeah, I think that will be cool. So I do have my pockets. And I'm going to take a glue. I do have here one of these stamped sheets. So here I'm going to put a glue on these three sides. Oops, come here. And I will place it. I'm gonna go from the bottom so I will have my pocket with a pocket the uh, pipe <laughs> page with a pocket and I do have here that leftover from that sheet I did cut also these three labels maybe I will just add them you know to the pocket I'm not sure I did use the, those dies from Tim Holtz they are new one Vintage labels, very easy word. Okay, vintage labels, uh, new dies from Tim Holtz. So I did use that to cut these three. And it does have that beautiful embossing effect. I, I really like that. So maybe I will just add them to one of these pockets for now. And here I do have that leftover. As you can see, that Elizabeth Crafts die made beautiful kind of like template so I'm gonna just get this here and maybe I can use it somewhere just like decoration I like to use uh, kind of like negatives for decor So I think I do have a lot of things prepared which I can add to my new mini notepad. I do have so many pockets. I do have pages, decorated pages. So now I'm going to grab <coughs> that cover which that notepad had from the start. And I will have to 
extended, I do believe, so I'm gonna kind of destroy it right now. Then I will put it back. But right now I'm just gonna rip it off, this one. So for altering that uh, notepad cover, I do have here this beautiful fabric. Uh, I'm not sure about the right name of this fabric. I think it's called muslin, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I do have here clear embossing powder. I do have here my altered shoe wax or shoe, shoe polish, liquid shoe polish. I add there just black acrylic paint and mix it well. So now it's like black shoe polish with a brown uh, background and I do have here Nouveau acrylic painting this is mushroom color and with my brush so first what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cover both these pieces with this fabric I'm gonna use for that just glue stick I do have both cover from one side with that fabric on this soft front uh, piece I'm gonna use this Nouveau painting it's really beautiful kind of like very warm gray color it's called mushroom it's like gray mixed with pink it looks that way it has kind of like a uh, pink background so this painted piece is now nicely dry. I'm gonna take my stamps. Yeah. And I will do some easy stamping. I think like this. Tips this way. Uh, I'm gonna use embossing stamping ink pad. <clears throat> and stamped all this. But before I will use that embossing ink pad. First, I'm gonna use my anti-static pouch, or this one, this, what is that, pillow, <laughs> and make sure that once I will use clear embossing powder, it will don't get stuck somewhere where I don't want to. I do have stamped that, uh, those images, I'm not sure if you can see the shadow of my stamping, I'm gonna use that clear embossing powder. And cover all these images with clear embossing powder. And of course use heating tool and melt it. It's finally <laughs> melted. Now I'm thinking I use two complicated stamps. I will see. Maybe I should use just some easy stamps like is this one here with that with that writing. And I'm gonna wipe my altered shoe polish over that image and I will see what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna keep this one the way it is right now. Uh, for that back cover, I'm gonna use just ground espresso and just slightly go over the edges. The rest I will do once the journal is all together. So I do have front cover. I need to put something here inside. So maybe one of these pages will be good to use. And from that I will probably start with all the rest. So I'm gonna put pages in some kind of order, but before I will glue them, uh, I will take a glue, add a glue on this piece of fabric, fold it over the edge here, So this will be kind of like 
uh, finished. And now I'm gonna take one by one of these papers. This will be first one. I do have here that eyelet, so maybe not this one. Maybe something without an eyelet. Maybe this one. And I'm gonna glue it to that front cover. It will be journal which is going to lift up. Now I'm gonna take my first page and just place it right here. And I will also try to make it straight, but if I will be not straight, <laughs> to be honest, I will don't mind that much. I've got here this medical tape. It's perfect tape for gluing pages together because it's strong and it holds really well. So I think my second page will be these two pockets. So first I'm going to place it right here to match these two together and glue it from this side. And here as you can see that medical tape is very transparent so it doesn't cover that gold uh, that much. I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna take another page from my composition and I think that can be these butterflies and I will do exactly the same with this gluing one page on that previous one I'm gonna put together all these pages, lift it up, make sure here they do look, you know, kind of similar. Then I'm gonna take this one and again glue them together. So I did glue that last page. I'm gonna take my back cover and I'm gonna use this shorter piece. I'm gonna put a glue on this rest from that top cover and I'm gonna also put a glue on that fabric here. That fabric goes on my page and this chipboard I will glue it straight to the edge of that last page like this now just flip it over and first, first make sure I am <laughs> on the right spot and just flip it over, hold it down, make sure it's all sitting nicely. I'm gonna check it one more time. Yeah, now I can cut this one a little bit shorter, I think. And the same size fabric around and now I can open it one more time take my brush one more time ground espresso and I can go a little bit more on these edges once I know how big they will be like this on the back cover here I can do some stamping or I can place there uh, some background paper if I will want so but this way I do have decorated mini notepad using mostly my stamps and some inks. And it looks like this. It does have pockets, it does have decorative papers, it does have 
those eyelets where I can hang maybe small tacks. And I have to say I did really enjoy that. So this is my small creation for today. Uh, if you haven't used your stamps for a long time, go to dig in, in those drawers, in those baskets. Uh, I did it for two weeks, but I also removed uh, or moved furniture in my room twice. <laughs> It was exhausting, but I'm so happy I did it because I saw again how beautiful stamps I do have. And it's great motivation to see what tools you have. And it's a great inspiration. So this is my sharing for today. I hope you found something inspiring. I hope you will try to pull out or, or your, your own tool and to do something beautiful using simple notepad. Thank you so, so much for visiting me today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Have a beautiful day. Take care about yourself and I will see you soon. Bye.